Hello there students, welcome to a video by Mr. Bachatsky. This one is designed to help you with your maths and today we're looking at something called problem solving using factors and multiples. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm solving a maths problem, I can look a little bit like this guy up here, up the top with all those question marks, really not quite sure where to go and what to do. I'm hoping that by the end of this video, uh, you and I will both have uh, the light bulb come on and we'll know a little bit more about what we have to do here. So let's have a look at what we're going to be uh, aiming for today and our learning intention. Uh, we will understand that knowing the factors and multiples of numbers can help to solve problems. And our success criteria, or your success criteria, uh, hopefully you can say this at the end. I can solve problems using factors and multiples. Now, we don't have time in this video to work out, uh, again, what a factor of a number is or a multiple of a number. Hopefully you have already uh, worked that out for yourself. And if, you, if you're still not quite sure, it's probably worth stopping the video at this point and going back and revising what is a factor, what is a multiple, just so that uh, when we come to these problems now, you'll, uh, you'll know exactly what we're doing. Okay, let's have a look at the first problem. And uh, you might recognize this one. Uh, I'm assuming that the reason you're watching this video, in fact, is that you had a bit of trouble with this one initially. So let's have another look at it. And when we're solving problems, the first thing we have to do is read it very carefully. So let's read it carefully together. 20 students were sitting at a number of desks. The desks each had the same number of students and there were no spare seats. When one desk was removed, the 20 students still managed to fit evenly around the remaining desks. How many desks were there to begin with? Okay, well, the second thing, after we've read that problem, the second thing we should do when we're solving maths problems, is to look for that key information, the important information that's going to help us solve the problem. So let me just grab my highlighter pen. There we go. And uh, the first thing we come to at the top is that we have 20 students. So I'm going to highlight that. That's key information. Uh, we know that they're sitting at a number of desks. Okay, we don't know what the number is yet. That's actually what we're going to have to find out. But we do know that the desks each had the same number of students. Okay, and there were no spare seats. Now that should be getting you starting to think already. We've got each the same number and no spare seats. So no leftovers, no remainders. So what we're talking about here, of course, is multiplication or division. Now let's look a bit further. When one desk was removed, all right, taken away, the 20 students still managed to fit evenly, evenly, that's an important word, around the remaining desks. And our question, how many desks were there? Now I'm going to highlight this to begin with because that's going to be important when we get to it in a minute. All right, so as I said before, um, what we're thinking about now, we should be thinking along the lines of multiplication and division, equal groups or even groups. We know that we've got 20 students, so our key number is 20, and we're trying to split these 20 students among a number of desks. So what we're obviously looking for here are the factors of 20. Okay, I'll just get rid of that. The factors of 20. All right, now you should be able to list those and I'll just get them up there for you. Okay, so we have one, of course, one is always a factor of, of any number, and two and four and five and 10 and 20 are also factors of 20. These are numbers that multiply uh, to make the number 20. Okay, so if we have a look at these factors very carefully, okay, we know that, we know that initially that the desks are split into these number of students or these number of chairs, okay? So we could have 20 
groups of one or 20 desks with one student there. We could have, uh, we could have 10 uh, desks with only two students at each. All right, we know that four times five is 20, so we could have uh, four desks with five students or we could have five desks with four students. And you can see here, this one's quite interesting because um, the two numbers are consecutive, okay? So uh, five comes after four, in other words. Now, we know, if we come back to our question, we know that when one desk was removed, that the 20 students still managed to fit evenly. So here's where we can kind of work out uh, that we can see there's, there's one difference here between these two numbers. So that should be starting to make you think, hmm, right. So if I started with, let's say we started with five desks and then we'd have four students at each desk because we know that four times five is 20. What if we then took away one of those desks? We start with five desks, okay, so uh, one, two, three, four, five. Now they're not, they're obviously not all the same size, but that's okay. Imagine there's four students at each of these desks. There's four, uh, five groups of four. Now we take one away, remove one of those desks. Okay, we've still got, we've got four desks left. Can we fit um, five, can we fit 20 students around them evenly? Well, we can, we can have five here, five here, five here, and five here. So we've actually solved the problem. The answer, of course, is five, because we were after how many desks were there to begin with before we removed uh, that, that uh, fifth desk. Now we have four, we still managed to fit each of the students evenly around the remaining desks. Okay, so there you go. There's a problem that we've just solved using factors. Now let's have a look at a problem that uses multiples to solve. And this one is called Grandma's Cake, and I actually stole this one from a wonderful website called Enrich Maths. Um, the website is up the top there. Uh, let's have a read of it first. Grandma bakes a cake for her grandchildren who are going to visit her in the afternoon. She has forgotten whether three, five, or all six of her grandchildren will visit. She wants all of the cake eaten and each grandchild to get the same amount of cake. To prepare for all three possibilities, what is the smallest number of pieces into which she should cut the cake? All right, so this is a, this is a very wordy problem. And we're going to see that not all the words um, are really all that important in helping us to solve this problem. Let's look at the, the key information first. Okay, so look at the first sentence. Grandma bakes a cake for her grandchildren who are going to visit her in the afternoon. Does it matter when they're visiting? No, not really. Um, but here's a bit of key information. She has forgotten, uh, Grandma must be getting a bit old, I think. She's forgotten whether three, five, or all six of her grandchildren will visit. Okay, so... She's not sure whether there's three or five or maybe there's all six of her grandchildren. Hopefully she can remember their names, even if she can't remember how many there are, there are coming. Now, we know she wants all of the cake eaten. Okay, I'm going to highlight that. All of the cake has to be eaten. And each grandchild has to get the same amount of cake. Now, there we go again. Same amount each. Right? and all of the cake eaten. So there's going to be no remainder, no leftovers. Once again, you should be starting to think, hmm, division, multiplication. That's what we're looking at here. Okay, so the question is, to prepare for all three possibilities, what is the smallest number, the smallest number of pieces, okay, of pieces, in which she should cut this cake? And there's our answer under here. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. All right. So have a think about it. Now, if three, if, we, if three children turn up at grandma's place wanting some cake, all right, the smallest number she could cut that into would be, to make sure that each child gets one, of course, you know the answer, three. Okay, so we've got, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the multiples of three here. Okay, so the smallest number obviously here will be, uh, she could cut it into three pieces. All right, each child will get one piece. They'd be happy. All right, so here are our multiples of three. Now I've included some more multiples of three here, as you can see. Um, the first 10 multiples of three, uh, 
That's because if you think about it, um, our answer can't be three. Because what if five children turn up? Okay, grandma's not going to be ready for that. If she cuts it only into three pieces and five kids turn up, uh, a couple are going to miss out. All right, so um, we also need to think about the multiples of five. And not only that, of course, but we need to think about the multiples of six as well. So let's have a look at the multiples of five. And I've just done the first, first 10 multiples of five are here. All right. So 5, 10, 15, 20. Now, if you think about it, even if she cut it into five pieces, she's still going to be in trouble because if, if only three kids turn up, well, you can't do five pieces evenly amongst three. Once again, if six turn up, okay, we're going to have to look at how, how many pieces we could cut it up into six pieces. So these are all the multiples of six, okay? So um, if we had six people, six children, all of these numbers... Um, would divide evenly among those six children. Now, what we're looking for, what are we looking for again? We're going back to the question. To prepare for all three possibilities, what is the smallest number of pieces into which you should cut the cake? Now, have you worked it out? The answer is actually staring us right in the face. Okay, what we're looking for is the lowest or least common multiple. All right, so you've probably heard that before, the lowest common multiple, the least common multiple. And that's the lowest number that appears in all of these three lists. Okay, can you see which one it is? Now, it's not 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. It's actually none, none of these. It's the last number here, the 30. Okay, here's 30 is in the multiples of 3. It's also here in the multiples of 5. And it's down here in the multiples of 6. Okay, so none of the other numbers, uh, even 24 here, it's a multiple of 6 and it's a multiple of 3, but uh-oh, it's not a multiple of 5. So it's not going to work for us. Okay, 15's here and here, but it's not down here. So we have to look for the lowest common multiple, the, the lowest multiple that's in all three lists, and that is the number 30, and there's our answer. Okay, so if Grandma cuts the cake into 30 pieces, no matter how many of her children turn, grandchildren turn up, they're all going to get the same amount of cake, exactly. All right, so we've solved it for Grandma. She'll be very happy. Now, are you guys happy with what we've done today? Um, hopefully, you have uh, that's helped you to do this, learning intention. And down the bottom here, most importantly, um, can you now go ahead and solve some problems using factors and multiples? Well, that's what I hope you're going to go and do right now and have a bit more practice at that. Come back and watch the video again if, uh, if that's going to be useful to you. But otherwise, best of luck. And I'll see you next time.